So as you guys know, I got an HP laptop that has that interesting Intel Vega with HBM hybrid APU, or I guess you might call it SOC. I guess actually really quick, let's cover that right off the bat. There's going to be people saying, oh, this isn't really an APU. Uh, go look at pictures of what the Zen 2 APUs will look like. They'll have an IO die, a chiplet for the CPU, and a chiplet for the graphics card. If that's an APU, this is a fucking APU, okay? So, this is a weird Frankenstein chip that I don't think we'll possibly ever see again. <laughs> but Intel had to do it. They had to, their graphics weren't going to be ready for a couple years, and Iris has just not scaled past Broadwell, for being honest. Not well, at least. So they said, you know what? It was a gamble. They rolled the dice, and they said, our graphics cards will be here in a year or two, but we will lose contracts if we don't have a Frankenstein solution in the interim. Their Frankenstein solution was to just bring in AMD, especially because... A lot of manufacturers are using AMD, including Apple. So Apple probably said, yeah, I'll do that. By the way, we might use it. And so it was born. The 8705G and, of course, the larger uh, SOCs that do this. And I'm breaking the laptop into several reviews. And you'll want to stay tuned for the second one after this because it might not be exactly what you think it's going to be. But anyways, talking about the processor itself, um, I it, this laptop allows full overclocking, as far as I can tell. It, the core multipliers aren't completely unlocked, but you can clock it to 4.7 gigahertz. I didn't see any voltage or TDP. You can tell it to use 200 watts. It won't. It'll throttle. <laughs> but, you know, this is a fully unlocked quad core. And that makes it interesting. That makes it very interesting because... I have a 6700K. How much better are the best yields that they use for laptop? And all have little things popping up here soon. You know, I, I'm not going to go into a bunch of charts. This is a mini review. But I will, I did write it all down. Um, so you, here's my results. It boosts at stock stably between 3.4 and 4 gigahertz. And this is while using 45 watts. So... That's pretty damn good, <laughs> actually. A 45 watt, 3.4 gigahertz, eight thread CPU. That's way more efficient than their desktop chips. You guys are getting the dregs compared to, uh, you know, Apple here, guys, or HP in this case. It also, um, if I undervolted it and set it to the same clock speeds that I have my 6700K at, which currently I have my 6700K running at 4.3 gigahertz. Why 4.3? I don't know. I don't want to push it too far anymore. I need this thing to last me a year or so before I upgrade to Threadripper or something. So I've been going, I used to have it at like 4.6 gigahertz, 4.7, but I'm going easy on it now and undervolting just to make it run cool and quiet and stable now that I do more editing. Um, I could, so that used it about, my desktop used about 80 watts, undervolted 4.3 gigahertz. This CPU used about 60 watts, uh, 65 watts. 65 watts, whereas my desktop used 80 watts, undervolt to undervolt. So, yeah, about 30% more efficiency here, guys. And, and 65 was at most, right? I would say in games, my... would. CPU was definitely, you know, with its overclock undervolt, was definitely using more like 90 watts um, in games. And, and so in games on this CPU, it was almost half as much. So it is almost twice as efficient, in fact. Moving forward, the sweet spot for efficiency seemed to be about 3.4 to 3.8 gigahertz. This is where I went to about negative 150 millivolts. And at that level, the thing used like 40 watts, less than 40 watts, 3.8 gigahertz. And so that I think that's really interesting um, because what that tells us is the limits of Intel's 14 nanometer process. You know, what will they be able to get to with their 8 and 10 cores if they start to bring us the efficiency that they've been getting on their laptop chips to desktop. Um, right now, their 9900K, it has a 95-watt TDP, but if you actually run it with the 
stock TDP, the thing only boosts to like 3.4 or 3.5 gigahertz. Um, and that's using 95 watts. And so I'm saying this quad core at about three, about the same 3.4 gigahertz could get down to 40 watts. So if they brought that efficiency to desktop, assuming, of course, that it wouldn't be quite as undervolted because, you know, uh, they have to be safe with what they give to consumers, make sure it doesn't crash. Uh, I could see them getting an 8-core that, yeah, actually goes down as low as 80 to 90 instead of 95 watts. There's some more headroom there. And I could totally see a 4.3 gigahertz base clock version that has like 105 watts next year, if not this year, right? I could see a refresh where they they stop lying about the TDP and the thing boosts to 4.3 gigahertz base with eight cores at about 100 watts. So they will have a refresh that could possibly catch up to the 3700X. And it really is funny because I did all this extensive testing over the weekend right after the 4th of July and came to all of these conclusions you just heard right before this leak right here came out that pretty much backed up what I'm saying. So I guess maybe it's actually perfect timing for this video. I think from my own testing, this lineup is more than possible look at the this is pretty much exactly in line with what i said a few days before this video came out actually a week before this video came out intel really can increase efficiency by another solid i don't know 20 30 percent if they actually bring their best deals to desktop and it will bring competition to the market although i want to say it's going to bring competition to the market. I don't think they're taking any crowns really here. I mean, those are golden samples at the top, and that street price will not be $500, and Intel will love that. They'll say, no, it's $500. This trades blows with the 3900X, and, uh, you know, who cares if it's selling for $700? That's what gamers think our products are worth right now, and they'll be happy to do it with their golden samples they can't make enough of. Uh, but most of these chips will be possible, and I, and I think some of them will be compelling. You guys might find that interesting to know that. However, I will say this. Above 4.3 gigahertz efficiency, well, it didn't get horrible, but I the amount I could undervolt it was way less. If they release, which the only way they could even come close to competing with the 12 core and 16 cores is if Intel makes a 5 gigahertz all-core boost... 10 core and at that level no the thing's going to use at least 125 watts 150 so i guess i guess that's what i'm also confirming i think best case scenario and these will be absurd golden samples absurd golden samples is like a 4.8 gigahertz all core boost that's over 150 watts but it's possible, especially considering mine was a KB Lake, and I wouldn't be surprised if plus, 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 plus is a little more efficient. So, yeah. I guess what else to add? I kind of went on a long tangent about the future there. What else do I say about this actual processor? Well, and I'll touch on this in my second part of the review, where I touch on the graphics card itself, part of the APU. It's only as good as manufacturers let it be. There were some weird-ass throttling issues with this CPU. It wasn't getting that hot. And so I wonder if part of Intel's efficiency gain... I, I don't know. I don't know if HP is just being moronic and saying if it gets to 80C, which mine gets to 80C and my desktop fine without crashing. It gets to 90C without crashing. If... HP is just doing some weird decision where, it's, I mean, they just want it to be uh, cooler from now on so it lasts longer, and that's why they do a throttle at uh, 85 Celsius. Or if Intel is telling them to limit it to 85 Celsius because at lower temperatures, cards, uh, well, cards and CPUs run more efficiently. They really do. That's the thing you found with Vega is if you cranked up the clock speed, you could massively lower power consumption just by lowering its temps right there. So I don't know. I don't know if that's what it was. But I would say HP, for the love of God in the future, put more thought into boosting like, it would drop any time it got close to 85C. It would just drop to 800 megahertz. 
and then go back up. And in games and applications, that would put performance all over the place. It made games unplayable at stock settings. And, th- and it didn't make any sense. Like why? Like my desktop doesn't just drop to 800 megahertz if it hits 95. I think it's not. Well, 99C is when it starts throttling. And if it starts throttling, it'll go from 4.3 gigahertz to 4.1, then 3.9. Rarely that noticeable in any game. It's just enough to cool it off, not enough to crush your performance. Uh, and and this man, this laptop, for some reason, at least mine. I don't know if all laptops do this with this chip. It would just drop to 800 megahertz and stay there for a while. So, again, a good product's only as good as the software and the engineers utilizing it. It's very possible to ruin something that's great. But, yeah, uh, very impressive. Uh, so Much better yields than you guys are getting on desktop. And it gives you a glimpse into what Intel can bring to the table. They're not going to be able to compete head-on with Zen 2. Well, at least not with efficiency, but they've still got another 50% they can go if they can afford to bring their gold, their laptop golden samples to desktop. Hope you found this interesting. The next review will be on the HBM-powered Vega graphics card. It will be another mini review, not too many charts, but I did some benchmarking, and I'll have things pop up that tell you what I found. All right, please Subscribe to my channel if you like this, like my video, share it if you want other people to know about it, and of course talk with me on Discord if you are a Patreon member, my Patreon members make this possible. Thank you.